So I've opened a new file, nothing in there yet. It's just a basic template file. I've got a floor plan level one and level two, and then all the basic sort of elevation views as well. So I wanna just recap some of the uh, alternatives that you have for creating walls. At this point, we've looked briefly at the main way of creating walls, which is that you just activate the tool and then by default on the draw panel, you can see that it selects the line tool. Choose your type. And just for the sake of a little bit more sort of graphic detail and interest, I'm gonna click on the type and choose something other than the generic. I'll go with the exterior brick on metal stud. And then I just make a click to start creating the wall. I'm gonna zoom, zoom in a little bit so I can see a little bit more detail. And notice that as you drag, you get these alignment lines helping you draw horizontally or vertically. In addition, you'll get a temporary display showing you the uh, temporary angles. So if you're trying to hit something precise, you can reasonably rely on those. But uh, just for the sake of the demo, I'm just gonna make something simple like this. That's the default state of the tool. Just so I can see a little more information here, I'm gonna switch to the detail level fine, and then the visual style is gonna be shaded. So in addition to that, rather than just using the regular line tool, you can activate the wall tool again and create a set of walls with the rectangle tool. You can use a uh, set number of sides for a polygon. If you want to, for example, live in a stop sign, there you go. You can do a turret or a grain silo. I won't judge, live where you like. And in addition to that, I've also got an arc end radius tool. A lot of these tools do what you would expect them to in other programs like AutoCAD, so no big surprises there. And I've also got this one, which allows me to, after the fact, round corners. This is the fillet arc tool, not fillet. We're not cooking <coughs> fish here. So if you click on that tool, you can select one wall and then another beside it and just kind of round out the corner a little bit, make it a little softer. So those are the major methods that you use when you want to create walls. And beyond that, then, when you want to start modifying them, I'm just going to get rid of some of this excess geometry. And I'm going to just create some extra sections of wall here just to kind of set up for the use of some other wall tools. So I'll deliberately create a section here that falls short of the corner that these two should be meeting at. And then I'm also going to create a few other little sections here just in anticipation of using some of the modified tools. So I'm gonna show uh, initially tools that you can use on the wall that don't actually, or sorry, uh, modification options that you have with the walls that don't involve any actual formal tools. And then we'll look at ways that you can actually um, use some more elaborate tools as ways of modifying uh, the walls that you have. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is that when you grab a wall, you have a few different grips and other little uh, sort of modification options. The first one that I'll point out is this little set of double arrows. If your cladding is on the wrong side and you want to flip it, just use that button. If you want to move the wall, you'll notice that your cursor, which is normally in this default kind of modify selection uh, appearance here, it changes to a move icon. And then you can just kind of click and drag that around whoever you like. And then the other modification that you can make is with the grips at the end of the wall. So there are these little blue dot grips if you just click and drag them, you can change the extension or the length of the wall. You can also use those to rotate the wall. So there are a lot of times where you make changes to the wall that don't involve any actual formal tools. You can just use the grips and some of the uh, kind of default modification states. When you need to do something a little more elaborate than that, you can use tools that are found on the Modify tab. So over here on the far right, on Modify, We'll start off with one of the most basic, which is the Trim Extend Corner tool, which happens to have the same uh, keyboard shortcut as it does in AutoCAD. It's not quite the same tool, but you can trim in AutoCAD by just typing in TR. So same thing here. And the way this works is you just click on the tool and then select the wall and then the wall that you want to trim and extend it to. So notice how we were a little bit short of that kind of imagined corner and it not only trimmed them to that point, but extended them as well. So a nice kind of combination tool. Notice with that tool that if I had the situation like this, where the wall went past that kind of imagined intersection point, I can actually get it to trim a different way depending on where I click on those walls. 
So in the first example, I just activated the tool and clicked here and here. But depending on where I click on this wall, I can get a different uh, intersection. So I can click here and here, and it'll trim to the top. And then once again, if I happen to have cladding on the wrong side, I can just flip it easily with this little icon. So the trim tool is one that you'll use quite a lot. Uh, very, very common tool, very useful. Uh, next to that, I would say just as likely is going to be your use of the align tool. And the way that this one works, it might be in a situation where I have a wall like this, and I want its outside face to be aligned with the outside face of this wall. I could use a move tool to do that, but I'll have more success if I just click on align. Select the destination first. It's hard to, see, hard to see the highlight there, but it's just the outside face of that brick. If I click there and then click on the same sort of corresponding point on this wall that I want to move, it brings them into line. And um, this tool, as I said, very versatile. You'll get lots of use out of this one. So keep that one in mind. Uh, next to trim extend and align, I would say your uh, likely to use the move tool itself quite often. Now we saw already how you can use just the regular sort of default grips on the wall to move it, but there might be a time where you need to move the wall, let's say a certain number of millimeters. So let's say that this wall is in the wrong spot, it's off by 650 millimeters. Click the wall and then go to the actual move tool and here you can just kind of click an empty space to establish a base, uh, base point and then just drag up in the direction that you want to move it and type in whatever that number is. If my short-term memory is intact, I think I said 650. So there we go. Nice, accurate, easy. Um, and the nice thing about that is you avoid clicking on objects in the file. Um, snaps can be unreliable. You might end up clicking on something that you don't want to snap to. So I find that method's a little bit more reliable. Next to that, um, and a little over, we have the mirror draw access tool. If, for example, I have a, a wall like this and I need something that uh, kind of radiates out at the same angle but the opposite angle to the right, let's say, for example, somebody pointed this out in my last class, I need to do a bay window. <coughs> Best way to do that would be to just click on the wall, activate the mirror draw axis tool, and then it's waiting for you to draw the line uh, around which it will mirror a copy of this wall. So if I just drag up, obviously it's going to put a copy of that wall with the opposite angle on the right side. So depending on where you draw, it'll just do the mirror function. That way, a similar sort of tool to what you see in AutoCAD. And beside that, we have a split element tool. When I click on this, I get a little X-Acto knife, and then I can just hover over the wall and just click. And now I actually have two separate entities, two separate instances. Uh, of that same wall type. Now, it will seem like I ought to be able to move this wall independent. You'll notice that what happens, though, is that Revit makes the assumption that you want to keep the walls together. So if I click this one and drag it, notice it's going to bring the other wall with it. So um, that might be frustrating. You might want to have a little more sort of independence there. Remember that the default is that the walls will be joined. If you want to cancel that, right-click on this little blue dot, and up here in your menu, just select Disallow Join. And that wall now can be moved independently. And could have done this before the move step. But because it's its own independent instance, it can now have a different type associated with it. So I can click up here in the Properties window and select something different. Block on metal stud, perhaps. And I have a separate wall there. Last one I'll show you here is similar to the Align tool. This is the Trim Extend Single Elements and the Trim Extend Multiple Elements tool. Um, I find that whenever I need this type of a function, I just use the Align tool anyway, so I don't use the Trim Extend Single very often, but the Trim Extend Multiple is uh, handy. As the name suggests, it just allows me to take walls that, for example, might not quite come to an, a perimeter wall. If I select that perimeter wall as the reference and then select the interior walls. I can just, depending on, or, uh, regardless of how many that I've got, just keep clicking and they'll all extend to that original kind of base wall. And I guess I gotta show one more here. To wrap up, just the rotate tool. The key thing to remember about the rotate tool is that when you activate it, <coughs> you're gonna get a blue dot grip and it usually goes to the center of that object, of that wall. 
And that is the uh, rotation point or the point around which it will rotate. So if you leave it in the center and then just use these uh, reference lines here on the tool, if you just click and pull, fairly intuitive, and you get a temporary dimension as well just to let you know what the uh, degree count is on your rotation. And as you would assume, there's got to be a way here to move that reference point or that pivot point. So if you click the wall again, click on the rotate tool, you don't have to rotate around the middle. You can click on that blue dot grip, drag, and the snaps work. So you can pull it maybe to the corner and then just use the rotate the same way, but be rotating from a different point.